There are some great 35 caliber big game cartridges that increasingly go the way of the dodo. They become extinct. Once loved by all, doing their job is expected, and they're by now gone, or as good as gone. Now, you might be asking yourself how this can be. Well, how can some really good cartridges with all their popularity be doomed? Well, surely there must be someone still using them for hunting and passing them along to his children, including the passion for them, or there must be the occasional shooter trying to keep them alive. The answer to this question is simple. It all boils down to performance. Technological developments have made it possible for the bullets of today to perform much better than those of yore. This means also that you would consider different cartridges if you need penetration or just plain old punch. Before, you had no choice. If you want to straight out flatten any game you encounter, you would go to the 35 caliber version of whatever hunting rifle was your favorite. However, nowadays, you just do not have to. There are other excellent choices that just come with similar if not better numbers. Sure, there's still some who do cling to the 35 caliber, but the appeal for the next generation is just gone. What was once regarded as the best of the best is now seen as underpowered and obscure, and nothing to really worth bothering with. Number 5, 35 Remington 1906. The 35 Remington was one of the favorite cartridges used by Northwoods deer hunters. It came with much more power than the 3030, so this was no surprise. Considered as a cartridge made for lever action rifles, the 35 Remington was in fact made for a semi auto rifle, the Remington Model 8. You might see that when you look at a little closer to the round itself. The rim is not larger than the base, contrary to most lever action cartridges. The 35 Remington made it fame when the Marlin 336 came chambered for it. It was used by Northeastern hunters who used to flatten buck with 1,776 foot pounds of energy from a 200 grain bullet pushed to 200 feet per second at the muzzle. This was just an ideal round for that task. If you wanted, you could get it even hotter with the Buffalo Bore Load. This came with a 220 grain bullet that got pushed to 2,200 feet per second at the muzzle. This brought you 2,364 foot pounds of energy. While it's no 30 30, it's also nothing to sneeze at. This is why many hunters still keep on using this round. Now, maybe this cartridge is not doomed yet, but it's already lost quite a lot of appeal. However, there are enough lever action rifles around chambered for it to keep it rolling for at least some time. Number 4, 35 Whelan of 1922 and 1988. Since a 200-grain bullet a muzzle velocity of 2,900 feet per second, the 35 Whelan is no slouch, more than enough to even handle Kodiak bears. There's quite some misconception about this round. Many see it as being a wildcat cartridge that was developed in 1922. They claim it was the brainchild of Townsend Whelan, an outdoorsman and gun writer. However, it was actually created by another gun writer with the name James V. Howe. He just named a cartridge after Whelan, with his permission, of course. Looking a little bit closer, the 35 Whelan is just a 30 odd 6 Springfield necked up. This way, it could accept a bullet in 358 caliber. The combination sounds trivial, but it's, however, the hardest hitting cartridge that's not a Magnum. The super performance load from Hornady allowed it to fire a 200 grain bullet at a muzzle velocity of 2,900 feet per second. This brought an energy level of 3,760 foot pounds. Put in the right bullet, and this cartridge will flat anything you encounter, be it in North America or anywhere else on the planet. Remington legitimized this cartridge in 1988, opening the doors for something you might want to call a cult-like following. While that sounds great, it does however hide the fact that the masses never accepted this round. There has been a resurgence of the 35 Whelan and single-shot rifles owed to some regulations regarding deer hunting in some jurisdictions, but that's not enough to keep that little hard hitter going. Soon... It'll be out of active use and just be a thing of memory at best. Number 3, 350 Remington Magnum of 1965. Being a favorite of Jeff Cooper's, it's quite easy to see how the 350 Remington Magnum made it to fame. Together with its sister, the 6.5 Remington Magnum, they were the original short Magnum cartridges. Its career began in Alaska on the lightweight Remington Model 600. Gave the people there something lightweight to carry around, but at the same time powerful enough to handle the animals encountered in those regions. You can imagine that the recoil of this stout round and the rather light rifle was anything but soft, but it could be managed. Jeff Cooper, the founder of the Gunsight Academy and a gun writer, liked this cartridge. He shot it from a custom scout rifle to take his lion. While this seemed to bring a lot of success for his hard hitter, it did already start to disappear a mere decade after its introduction. There was an attempt to revive it in 2002. Remington chambered its Model 673 guide gun in it, but it was not successful. Interesting enough, the round itself is not to blame. 
Nothing's wrong with it. It can push a bullet with 225 grains to a muzzle velocity of 2,550 feet per second. This generates 3,248 foot-pounds of energy, making it suitable for quite anything you might encounter in North America. If you like this cartridge, well, you have to learn to reload it. If you're looking for factory ammo, you'll be disappointed. Number 2, 358 Winchester of 1955. There were some nice guns around chambered in 358 Winchester. This included a few Ruger 77s, and from Winchester, the models 188. To this comes the Browning BLR. The 358 Winchester is actually a 308 Winchester necked up. This allowed it to accept a 358 caliber bullet. Coming in and updated to the older 348 Winchester, which was quite popular itself. It's a short action cartridge. It has more power than the 35 Remington. It became famous when Winchester chambered its Model 88 lever action rifle and its Model 100 semi automatic rifle for it. However, both have been discontinued by now. Browning's BLR lever action rifle could also chamber the 358 Winchester, as could the, some of the early Ruger 77s. The cartridge could hammer a bullet with a weight of 250 grains at a speed of 2200 feet per second downrange. That was enough to bring 2,686 foot pounds to the table. While these numbers are impressive, there is a round which eclipsed it, the 338 Federal. This cartridge is itself a necked up variant of the 308 Winchester and brought the end to the 358. It'd be nice to say that the 358 Winchester has a future. It is, in fact, slowly approaching the end of its life. You can still find some factory ammo, but the popularity is gone. If you like this round, stock up on it and learn to reload, including casting your own bullets. Number one, the 356 Winchester of 1982. 356 Winchester was originally made for the Model 94 lever action rifle, but that did not help it much. It was practically doomed right from the outset. It was meant to boost the sale of the Model 94. For that, Winchester not only introduced the 356, but also the 307 Winchester, both in 1982. They're based on the 308 Winchester. The difference was the addition of a rim like that of the 3030 Winchester. With it, it could reliably feed and function in a lever action rifle. 356 Winchester itself was a 358 Winchester with the addition of a rim. For it, it gave up only 50 to 100 feet per second of muzzle velocity. The problem was nobody actually cared. Within a decade, it was all over. In fact, comparing it to the other 35 caliber cartridges, this is the only one that has the least chance to ever make it back into the arena. If you do own a rifle chambered in it, stock up on ammo. Learn to reload it perfectly as its days of official production are numbered. And there you have it, five forgotten 35 caliber cartridges that are done or are on their way to being done. If you'd like to shoot one of them from time to time or home with it, let us know in the comments.